of the action and the atmosphere and the presence of God who is going to be an instrument to it. God is going to bless you tonight. Stand to your feet and clap your hands as you welcome Bishop Eddie Addy. <laughs> clap your hands. You may be seated. Hello, hello, hello. You may be seated. My sound needs tuning, changing. Hello. One testing mic. One, two. Anybody who can help me? Any Christian? Hello. Okay. We are blessed to be here tonight. Clap your hands unto the Lord. In a couple of minutes, we'll be expecting Reverend Steve Mensah to be walking or driving into the compound. But in the meantime, I have a word from God for you. And it's just a simple word like John the Baptist to prepare the way of the Lord before you. So my title, the part title of my five minute message is preparing for impartation. In Genesis 28, we read from verse 10. Every day I'll be giving you small, small tidbits just for titillation and enticement. <laughs> he says, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place, and tarried there all night, because the sun was set, and he took of the stones of that place, and you can still dream. And behold, behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it, and behold whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. May God use you to bless many families on this earth. Amen. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. And will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. That is why you are at such a convention. There are things God has spoken concerning you. He will not sleep. He will not rest until he has accomplished all of it. Amen. Your amen is weak. Oh, I should do it when I go to Central Gospel Church. I should give them these blessings. Hey, oh, you are, you are here, but you are now coming. Some people have come, but they are now sitting down. He says, I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken concerning thee. That is why God has not left you. He is going to do what he has said concerning you. Hmm. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. It's a very sad sentence I find in the Bible. The Lord is in this place and I knew it not. You can be in a meeting, the Lord is there powerfully moving people are receiving every time people give testimonies and point to a particular service where that impartation took place there are always people who are also in that service who don't have that testimony even I heard of Benihin that when he recounts um, how he was blessed and impacted 
highlighted powerfully at Catherine Kuhlman's meetings. There are pastors who sort of don't understand what he's saying because they say, we're also there. We didn't see the things you are saying. It's like you are exaggerating. You are saying the thing too. Something has happened, but what you are saying is too much. It's more than what happened there. But we're all there. Because you can be in a place. God is there. He's moving. He's healing people. He's changing destinies. He's making people into worldwide evangelists. And some people are there. They are not, they are not even there. So it's important to prepare yourself for impartation. Because that was an impartation right there. He was just blessed that God just did it irrespective of how he was feeling. God just blessed him irrespective of how he was feeling. Because he had just fallen asleep. And in the midst of the sleep, a dream. And then God appeared to him and blessed him in the dream. So that one, he was asleep. So sometimes, it's also not bad. when you, Even when you are tired from home, you just come and be here. Because sometimes just being in the place where God is, do you see something can rub off on you? Even where you have slept. I mean, our prophet always recounts that the day his Christianity shifted to another level was at an all night. Christo first all night. Those days, there were not, you know, charisma, there were no charismatic churches having all night that you go to. There was Uwusu Efriye. He, he died recently. He used to organize what they call Christo Fest for all Christians. Because most churches, there was, the all night was not any people. And I remember in those days, we used to stay at home and do 31st night. We, we don't, there's, there's no real church that is crossing you over. Or chalaking you. Or uh, crossover and what? What are the, um, they are flyover, you know into Passover into 2020 something. Do you see? There, was, there were not many churches like that, but he organized it. And for the first time in his life, he went for an all night. A dear sister who loved the Lord and who was like a spiritual mother to him took him to this all night. And he said he slept throughout the night. He was asleep. He said, he couldn't wake up. He was only interested in some keyboard. This was on the, the guy was playing keyboard very nice. After they finished playing the keyboard, he didn't know what happened again. He, when they wake him up, he just falls asleep. He said, I've never been for an all night before. I didn't know how to compose myself. He just slept. Uh, he said, but when I woke up at the end of the all night, I was a different man. This is the sort of impartation. Yes, I said, I was a different man. And today, we are experiencing that difference. Yeah. So, that is why it's important to be at a meeting. Just your presence there. Some people don't know that there is a place of blessing. God told the disciples after I resurrected, he said, go to Jerusalem. He said, go ahead. He said, he will meet you there. He gave them a place that go there, he will meet you there. When the day of Pentecost was coming, he said they should go to Jerusalem. They should be there. And they were there in the upper room appointed for them. And then at the appointed time, the Holy Ghost came. So it's important to be at the place where God has chosen to put his name there. If God has arranged a meeting and you have an opportunity to be there, you must physically be there. And be there from the beginning because you will never know when God walks through a meeting. Because of your own homiletical arrangements and your own protocols, you, you feel that, oh, if you are going to meet God, okay, you come whenever, 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 whenever. Do you see? Even sometimes you are coming. And you don't know that God is already in the house. So you are taking your time chatting with somebody and God is here already. Well, you think that he comes when you come. So it's important to have that mind that I must be at the place where God is moving. Yeah. Number two. So be there. It's, a, it's an important instruction. Be there. Okay? 
Because the Lord can be in a place and you don't know it. You don't experience it. Number two is Joshua 3 verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do what? The Lord will do what? Wonders among you. Mm. God will do wonders among us. So what does it mean? It means to sanctify or set yourself apart. Or prepare yourself and it's like bath. You see, when you are going to meet somebody of importance, you prepare. You, you don't just come like, oh, I just came. It's like you prepare. Yeah. Sometimes the reason why we don't get certain impartations is because it's like we are not prepared or we are not ready to meet the person who is coming with the goods is changing from now. Amen. Yeah, it's changing from now. Amen. It's like your mind, your heart. Sanctify means separate yourself, set yourself apart, consecrate, dedicate yourself to the meeting. That's why we have prayer meetings before the conference or convention. That is why we have rehearsals. We are preparing. We are, we are making ourselves ready. It's not just a normal time. God is coming specially. So we are also specially preparing. Yeah, that's why some are in suits. I'm in my Sunday best. Yes. Because, uh, uh, with the pochette, yes. Because it is a special time. And your heart is tuned to it that there is going to be something. I can't miss it. I'll be part of it. God will do something wonderful. I will not miss it in my time. I will be there. Very important. Any important person come into your house. You, if, if you never, if, if me cry, even as small as I am, if I say I'm coming to your house. I mean, you will see that you will clean the place. You will remove all cobwebs. Do you understand? You will bath. Do you see? You will wear, you will have house dresses that there are some people who have what they call shiatale, like house dress, fiatale, which is not honorable. And if you marry someone who has that mindset that fiatale is like what I wear in the house, sometimes it's torn, it's so totally faded. So I will not wash it because you are in the house. You see, so what it is is that to the people in the house, you appear dishonorable and nasty and not attractive. So, matadie be that, you know, I mean, it's unseemed. You see, the elastic is finished. Do you understand? The color is finishing. The armpit is torn. The, the, the edges are all unseamed. Partly unseamed, partly on. As soon as you hear that a visitor has come, you will change. Hey, now but me by me by me by me by me by me open the door, open the door, he's coming. Then I'm going to I'll see him there. Yeah, my hair, your hair net. You see, you have to remove all. Yeah. That's sanctifying yourself. Yes. When God will do wonders. Don't just appear like how you normally appear. Because he will do wonders in our midst. Beautiful. So sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. For this week. The Lord will do wonders. When you are at work. Your mind is on this meeting. Your heart is on the meeting. Yes. You are even fasting. You are fasting. It's like you are preparing yourself for an impartation. Yeah. When a woman wants to be pregnant and she knows, she prepares the day, she checks the date and she makes sure that it is going to fall on pepper, pe, she prepares herself and makes sure that that night, dear, oh, he will not sleep. He will not sleep. She will sanctify herself 
and make herself ready. Tonight, as you make yourself ready, God will do wonders in your life. You will be in this meeting. You will live with testimonies. You will say, God has visited me. God has blessed me. And God has done wonderful things in my life. Clap your hands and celebrate the Lord. Number three. Expectation. Proverbs 23, 18 says, For surely there is an end. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. Surely there is an end. There is an end. <laughs> you see, that means that there is an end to every trouble. There is an end to every problem in your life. There is an end to every harassment. There is an end to your joblessness. There is an end to your non-traveling to America and to Europe and abroad. There is surely there is an end. Then he puts a word there that says thine expectation. It's like what you expect. Expect. What are you expecting in this meeting? What is your expectation? As a man of God is coming. What, what do you want God to do for you? You don't have anything. You have just come. That's why you come just as I am without one plea, but that the blood was shed for me and that that beast me come unto thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. It's like you don't have any serious expectation. And depending on your expectation is what your end will be. Amen. Yes, thine expectation shall not be cut off. Thine expectation. Thine expectation. Number four, joy. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. The Bible says, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Therefore with joy, whatever you are expecting from God, I tell you, open your heart with joy and get ready with joy to receive whatever God has for you. It will come to you practically in Jesus' name. If you, even, if you don't believe it, you can just put it in your pocket because somebody here will have a testimony from this conference. And you will also be in the meeting. But because you didn't believe or didn't have faith, hey, so <laughs> Hey, wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Reverend Dr. Kwejo Boateng Bempa is in the house. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. With joy, you will draw from the wells of salvation. So when you are in a meeting, your heart must be full of joy. Because you are going to draw from the wells of salvation. You are going to draw your babies. You are going to draw your job. You are going to draw your healing. You are going to draw your deliverance. You are going to draw your visa to America. And you can only draw it with joy. You people, you see, you don't know how to go to... Uh, stream to fetch water or well to fetch water from a well that somebody has dug a well and there's water you are drawing from the well people are do you know back, back at size 34 do you know size 28? So, town people, munim wenyina. Do you know what is called ankre? Yes. Today you have uh, this type of. Eh? Eh? You have borehole, you have uh, reverse osmosis. I mean, you have tanks. This is type of Rambo tanks, poly tank. Yeah, in those days we had ankre. Yes. I don't even know what it is, but it's a step of round something with, with, with some belts around it. We, we go and fetch water into it. Yeah. 
And if you don't have what it takes to fetch your water, do you see, you cannot fetch water and come. Yeah. You need something. And God is saying that in his kingdom, in salvation, there are things in the wells of salvation. And you can only draw from the wells of salvation with joy. With joy. With joy. That is why Satan calculates every time to send people into your life who will reduce the joy in your life. When you are in the church, you are morose. You, you don't smile. When they are preaching, you don't know how to receive preaching with joy. You don't know that the anointing on a man of God will draw from with joy. With joy. When you are preaching to people who are not joyful, eh, it's different. It's very different. You, you, you have to look at your notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to read every scripture you have written. Yeah. You, you have to go through the notes until you finish. But when you are preaching to people who, whose eyes are full of joy, smiling, hey, expectation, hey, it's like preach. Yeah. When Ezra stood up, in the days of Nehemiah, and he, she, he put the book, the Bible, book of the law, and the Bible said, when he opened it, all the people stood up. And when he read from the scripture, the Bible says the people shouted, Amen, Amen, with the lifting of the hand. <laughs> with the lifting of the hand. They didn't just stand there morose and some way, and it's like they don't have any expression. They are just looking bum. Look. Don't tell me that that's how your face is. Or don't tell me that that's how your temperament is. Because those of you who are even very melancholic and stiff, you will have children. You have children. You have children. All of you who have straightened your face and made yourself. And, and it's like, oh, they, oh, it's like, <laughs> there are some things. Unim sen ya kikum, na unim sen ya ye de de, na unim sen ya ye ka amen, and na unim sen ya ye body preaching. So, your face like a ye. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I look at mommy, I say, look at her stiff face, be. but I know her. I know her. I know her quarreling voice. I know her facing choir voice. Yes, her rehearsal voice. She has a rehearsal voice. A voice for rehearsals. Yes. And she has a voice for organizing her office, her shop. When her MK last customers come, she has a voice. When she comes to church, she has a social media voice. When, when, when she comes to church, no, I ain't any sometimes I just smile in my head and I say okay, girl no. yeah, I know your husband too yes I know your husband and I know that you have children so I won't say any further but you know what I mean yeah. but when you are in church you have to learn that salvation things, healing, deliverance, I mean, um, impartations, whatever a man of God carries, it is you draw with joy. You draw with joy. You draw with joy. So tonight, put on your joy cap and put on your joy shoes and put on your joy and pick up your bucket. We are going to draw. I've come to draw, draw, draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. I've come to draw. What do me do, me Jawati, with your voice? Me turn up with excitement now. Oh, turn up, call. Draw from you again. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. We've come to draw. Are you sure you've come to draw? draw Are you sure you've come to draw? draw Are you sure 
why you are here to draw you again. Yeah. Yeah. I've come to draw. Sit down. It won't be long. The man of God will be in the house. But number five, finally, number five. Okay. But let me even read my verse again. But I didn't read my verse and then you made me uh, finish my preaching. In Isaiah 12, verse 1, he says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Then he says, therefore, with joy, you will draw from the wells of salvation. Jehovah is your salvation. Jehovah is your healer. Jehovah is your provider. Jehovah is your visa giver. Jehovah is your marriage arranger. Jehovah is your wedding sponsor. Jehovah is your, Jehovah is your, he is your, he is your, he is your contractor. By him, you will buy land. By him, you will build a house. By him, you, oh, the lady sent me photos just this afternoon. The sister, she sent me photos this afternoon. She said, Bishop, thank you for your prophecies. You prophesied that we shall travel, all expenses paid, live in hotels. You will not pay anything. Today, I am in Dubai. I'm enjoying a hotel free of charge. I eat and I sign. I eat and I sign. I say, Jehovah is your salvation. Therefore, you will go abroad and you will not pay even your ticket money. Your spending money, your hotel expenses, all will be paid for you. Jehovah is your God. I see. With joy. So those of you who come to church now, my mom <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is beautiful I hear the sound of abundance of rain and tonight your blessing is assured in this meeting you too will have a testimony finally finally preparing for impartation you must come with faith in James chapter 1 verse 5 he says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God is there something you lack that has triggered an expectation in your life tonight ask of God and the Bible says he gives to every man liberally God is not coming to give to only Ashantis here he's not coming to give to only Ewes you see because if it was if God was giving to only Ewes and your name is not Prosper or Senanu eh? or, or Forgive. Do you see? Or Wisdom hmm? or MFA or Agbeno Heavy or Quick Pitcher. Pepena. It's like you will not qualify. Yes. For those of you who have this simple, simple name, Smith, you know, <laughs> Peterson. Vogelson. <laughs> you, you will not pass. But thank God that he's not coming for only a West. Your own is also inside. But the Bible says that Although he does not abrade or he does not unsystem or he does not discriminate, verse 6 says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. 
For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But for let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. So when you come like this, you all must also be, there must be faith in your heart. Sometimes you put everything on the man of God. He should pray. He should wait on God. He should know the word to preach. And he should pray for me to receive what I want from God. Me, dear, I don't know what I can do to help. But if you check Jesus, anybody Jesus met, all of them who received impartations, he said to them, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Your faith Amen. has made you whole. Amen. Go thy way. Thy faith has saved you. Go thy way. Woman, go thy way. Your daughter is healed. I've never seen such great faith. Go thy way. Your, your daughter is healed. Your servant is healed. Your servant is well. Go thy way. All of them, he said, thy, thy faith has made the whole. Thy faith, thy faith. Thy. You can't come here, do you understand, putting all your last on the man of God. What do last a good on your mini person? Are you to waste your faith? Who oh, assess a man of God who to see which direction is it prophetic? Is he going to be prophetic? Or is he going to uh, be evangelistic? Or is he going to be teaching? Or is he going to be just say uh, you want to categorize him in the fivefold ministry? Now now, oh, I think he's, the way he preaches, he sounds more like a teacher. So he's a teacher. I see that he's teaching. Oh, teach you all. Are you open to open to turn your Bible to turn your Bible to? But within the same thing, you see that there's an impartation taking place. God is going to surprise many of us here today with amazing testimonies. You will not live here the same. Anybody who can dare to believe, you are going to receive miracles and testimonies, mind blowing. I told you already, Jacob said, the Lord is in this place and I knew not. It means God is here. And you may not know it, you may not feel it. Maybe you feel warm or you feel cold or you feel heat or you feel, you feel maybe your friend hasn't come so you are not feeling happy. <laughs> so your feelings are not the feelings I'm talking about. He said, the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. But God can be here and you will feel him. You will know him. And he will impart many amazing things in your life. So get ready for empowerment. Get ready for supernatural and amazing manifestations. Man of God is ready. God is ready. And I know that if you have faith and connect with joy, with great, what is your expectation? What do you want? Just let me know. Have you heard that song before? It's fine, but what is your expectation? Hmm? Even God says, for I know the plans or the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Is that what the King James says? The King James says, uh, RSV says, to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to bring you to a hope, to a, to a future and a hope. Yes. What is your hope? What is your expectation? Tonight, God will bless you if your heart is open. Clap your hands, stand to your feet, and just in three minutes, I want you to clap your hands and pray, and pray about any expectation you have. What you would like God to do for you. Somebody, you need a healing. Sometimes even it's not for yourself. You need a healing for your brother, or your sister, or your mother. Many people came to Jesus, and with their faith, they requested healing for their children, for their servants. Do you understand? Yes. 
clapping your hands praying with all your hearts maybe you have no expectation but God will give you something. Yes. May it never be cut off, Lord. Lord, our expectations, Lord. Whatever we expect of you, Lord. Tonight, oh God, let our needs be met, Lord. Why don't you lift up your voice? Yes, Lord, we thank you, we thank you for the joy, for the joy, for the joy with which we shall draw out of the wealth of salvation tonight. The spirit of faith, the spirit of faith, the spirit of power, the spirit of faith, the spirit of power. Yes, Lord, to believe in the name of Jesus, to believe in the name of Jesus, to believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. We bless your holy name. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Father, we thank you for the expectation. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the faith. And we thank you for the atmosphere to receive the miracles you have ordained for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. The man of God is in the house. Give the Lord a shout of praise. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Shall we invite the Christians to minister unto us? The Christians. Clap as the Christians come up.